Hey, so um, I decided I'd do a video about some of the products that I've been using um, recently, I guess. Um, <laughs> I know I haven't made a video in like literally like two months or something like that. Um, but I thought I'd kind of walk you through the main things that I've just been using recently. I don't use, I don't wear makeup as much as I used to. Um, I don't wear the same types of products. Um, especially eye makeup, that's completely changed, and face makeup has changed as well, everything's kind of changed. So um, I'll just take you through what I've been wearing recently. So, um, But this is basically 28 grams of <laughs> studio finished concealer, but it's, it is slightly different. It's more, I think it's more emollient, it doesn't have an SPF in it, um, but I like it because my skin is actually kind of dry and this is, it doesn't go on as matte as Studio Finish Concealer. Um, so what do I use this for? Um, I used to use it as a makeup supplement through my T-zone, so if I was wearing sort of more light coverage foundations, I'd just take, say, a buffing brush and I'd just blend it in this and then I'd just kind of buff it through my T-zone and then I'd use my fingers to put it on spots. Um, um, but what I never thought to use this for was actually as an under eye concealer and that's what I've been using it for today. So I use it on spots and areas of redness with my fingers and then I also use it with the Real Technique setting brush um, which is another favourite. <laughs> um, it's really like my favourite brush for under eye concealer but it's great for, um, for this because you can, because it's a solid you have more control over where you place it um, as opposed to a liquid in my experience anyway. So I can just put it where I need it. So I have a little bit of darkness there. Um, it's kind of like, I think I have kind of miasma. Is that what it's called? Melasma. Miasma. It's not the word. <laughs> That's a completely different thing. Um, melasma. So it's just kind of a hormonal kind of area of darkness that I got there. And then I have some kind of um, blue, bluesy kind of inner corner stuff. So I use that because it's very feathery and light. And it's just great for that, like it's, I have very dry under eyes, I've kind of always had very dry under eyes and then you have to use a lot of eye cream and stuff like that. So this is very nice, it kind of almost feels like it's protecting the skin and it feels very emollient and it feels very moisturising. So the next thing um, is also a base product and it's by Wet n Wild and it's called, it's the bronzer, bronzer, I use the term lightly, in reserve your cabana. So, the kind of label is worn off, but it's just, you get 13 grams, and it's a very kind of finely milled luminous powder, um, and you can kind of see it doesn't really look like, very much like a bronzer. I mean, if you're extremely fair, like if you're fairer than I am, you could use this as a bronzer, um, but I kind of use it as a setting powder. I got it to use as a highlighter, but when I swatched it in the shop, I think a lot more of the very subtle kind of micro shimmer showed up, and I... I got it home and I realized that it wasn't ideal for me to use as a highlighter. I mean, I just, I like something that's got a little bit more, at least iridescence to it. I don't like metallic highlighters, but I don't like using kind of almost like a semi-matte powder. Like, I don't know, for a highlighter, it's not um, kind of luminous enough for me. Sorry, I'm just going to use glue. Um, so, yeah, I use this over, I've been using this over some kind of cheaper foundations that I purchased. Um, like one I've got on today, which is the Rimmel Wake Me Up, and this is great, but it's too, it's actually too fair for me, and it's in the lightest shade, um, number 10 light porcelain, so it's too fair and too pink for me, so this is kind of like, on my skin it shows up as kind of like a, a warm peachy kind of colour, um, and it's very close to my actual skin tone, I also like wearing this just dusted over my face, like if I put on a little bit of concealer on the areas where I need it, and I dust this over my entire face just with like a blush brush, um, you get like, it's basically like a finishing powder. Um, so that's what I use it for. I use it as a setting powder and as a finishing powder. Um, so it gives you that kind of, it's like the poor man's um, ambient lighting powders from Hourglass. So it's just, it's really great. I don't know. I don't really know what else to say about it. And I think this is around 650, so it's really good. It looks very expensive. And the one thing I will say about it, the last thing I'll say about it, because I have a tendency to ramble on about everything I talk about, is that um, it's actually very lightweight for a powder. This was one of the first powders I actually started using. 
all over my face, and I have it under my eyes today, I have it all over my face, um, and it doesn't feel powdery, because that's one of the reasons I never really wore powders, because I hated the way that they felt. I prefer to have kind of more of like, almost like a sticky feeling on my face from a liquid um, foundation than a really powdery, cakey, dry feeling from a heavy duty powder. So this doesn't give you that, it doesn't kind of get stuck in the cracks of your lips or anything like that. For the price, it's remarkably lightweight, it's it's quite kind of luminous, um, and it, it will take down the sheen of your foundation a little bit if it's very dewy, but um, it's, it's not something that flattens your face, it probably doesn't have great oil control, but that's not what I'm using it for, so it's really fantastic, and I've used quite a bit of it, like the kind of sunburst pattern is pretty much gone, so um, definitely something I'd be purchasing, I really love it. Another powder product is from Catrice, and it's the Illuminating Blush in the shade Nuts About You. It's number ten. So they changed the um, they changed the embossing kind of. It used to be kind of a closer design, and now it's sort of like a zigzag kind of line type thing. Um, again, I've kind of worn the design down a bit. Um, it's basically like kind of. A warm rosy color. Um, it's a blush for people who don't like blush <laughs> um, or a blush for people who don't want their blush to kind of take over and be sort of the focal point of their um, makeup and I like my blush to be that sometimes but other times I don't and um, it's right there. It's very close to a shade I have from NARS which is called Unlawful which was limited edition from around this time last year so it's kind of like like a rosy, a rosy color. Um, they're actually very similar when you and blended together. Like they're basically the same on the cheeks. So um, they're both, they're both great. But the great thing about this is that it's probably more user friendly. Like it's, you can be more heavy handed, um, and it doesn't have the same sort of shimmer. It's kind of basically matte. Um, and it's cheaper as well, so if you bring it travelling and it breaks or you throw it in your bag, you can kind of easily replace it, so um, it's great. It doesn't look like anything, but it's a very popular blush from Catrice, and it's very popular for a reason. It's just, it goes with everything and anything, and I also like wearing this on my cheeks when I'm not wearing any eye makeup. Um, just if I'm, even if I'm just wearing a little bit of this powder, or if I'm wearing like a very light BB cream. Um, this is just great to throw on, it's just foolproof. Um, and it, it's hard to overdo, which is saying a lot for me because I have a tendency to overdo almost every cheek product, so. But I used to use exclusively black liquid or gel eyeliner, and I do like a very sort of graphic wing, um, sort of winged out, sort of horizontally, I guess, through one of those upward flicks, and it just sort of, you know, serves to elongate my eyes which are kind of roundy and I just like the way that it makes my face look. So I've actually been trying to get a similar look with cream eyeliner or with pencil eyeliner and I never thought I'd do that because you certainly don't have the same precision with like these are two twist up pencils and this is a cream shadow which is kind of far more chunky. Um, but I experimented and I played around with these and I realized that you have First of all, you don't have to worry about washing brushes like you do with gel liner. Um, they're a lot easier to remove <laughs> in comparison to like gel and liquid liner. Um, you get a softer look because you know you can use shades like this one. Should I tell you what these are? I don't fucking know what I'm doing. Can you tell? I don't know. Um, so I have two from Catrice. Um, and these are the liquid metal gel pencils, so I have one in the shade um, Hazel de Hoff, which is basically like Mac Teddy Eichel. So it's like a very sort of red, um, a red-brown kind of piece, like a dark red-brown, so that's very nice. I like using that when I'm wearing no eye makeup and just sort of, it's, it's not as harsh as black. And it's nice and warm, um, but it's great over like an eyeshadow either. Um, and then I have another one from Catrice from the same line called Lilac, is back in navy black. So it's 
basically like um, taupe grease from Chanel in pencil form. Um, it's a taupe grayed out kind of, it's got a few sparkles in it, um, vaguely purpley kind of grayish color. And it's probably more purple than taupe grease and a little bit more cool tone, but it's not like a warm purple pencil, which I would like to paint with this at some stage, but that's kind of nice. And It's very similar, this color is very similar to a dark brown with some minimal shimmer in it from Laura Mercier. Um, it's sort of like, it's just sort of like a neutral bronzy brown color and it does have some kind of micro shimmer in it. You can kind of see it there, it's less red than the Patrice brown kind of Teddy Eichel type vibe. Um, it's the one I'm wearing today, so you can see it's sort of winged out. Like I've concentrated it in the outer half of my lid and then I've just sort of smudged it out a little bit. Something, it's something you kind of have to play around with a little bit and I think that's the case with a lot of like eye makeup shapes and techniques unless you're doing something very graphic, even if you are doing something graphic. It depends on your eye shape and shape and the tools you have at hand. So um, yeah, uh, 